I'm Yardar, this is The Catch. Today we're in Stratford, Connecticut. We're gonna learn how a hydraulic clam dredge catches clams. Little necks, chowders, top necks, cherry stones, quahogs, or just clams. We know them by many names, but their Latin name is derived from their use as wampum. Native American cultures would use the beautiful purple and white interior of the shells to form belts of beads, which were symbols of power and status and were later corrupted into use as currency by early European traders. Hence the name Mercenaria Mercenaria, loosely translated to money, money. Hard shell clams have been a valuable commodity since the dawn of time. The Barbara Ann is owned by GNB Shellfish Farm. She's a 45-foot Young Brothers lobster boat rigged up solely for the purpose of harvesting hard clams. She's captained by Chris Tereniuk, who is a lifelong fisherman and has been running this boat for quite some time. How long have you been running the boat for? Around five years now. So I went to college, got a finance degree, but loved the water, so stuck it out here. A hydraulic clam dredge uses high volume water flow at its leading edge to wash clams out of the bottom. This jet bar, it has a slight angle back right now. So it's blowing, it's gonna be blowing water down as we pull it over the clams. So they're gonna go up to these teeth and slide into the, the cage. Even though this is big, heavy equipment, it needs to be finely tuned so it can yield a high quality product and minimize its impact on the environment how easy those come off, I assume you're adjusting that manifold a lot. I was running it with three washers in there and caught clean but less product. So decreased it to one yesterday, caught more product, still caught clean. So yeah, you can, you can really fine tune it. The supply hose gets set out behind the boat. This big green hose is gonna drop in the water. That's where the water gets sucked up into this big four inch irrigation pump. The hose is gonna loop around the back of the boat and come here into the dredge. This fitting is loose so it can swing as the boat moves, won't bind up and kink the hose so the water supply can be consistent. Valves open, the supply hose will bring the water down to the dredge. So that's the wash bar in full action. It looks like a lot of pressure on when it's in the air, but when it meets the water resistance, it's not gonna put that much pressure in the bottom. That would only actually impact the bottom to maybe three or four inches, just enough to wash the clams out and lift them up into the basket of the dredge. Due to development and the damming of rivers, organic silt accumulates in areas it normally would not occur. The dredging activity helps move the silt to deeper water, allowing the bottom to oxygenate, creating a better environment for shellfish to settle. All right, so what are we doing here? Essentially, we're gonna go through. I always start this side of the pile so you can clean as you go, okay? Put this here, spread out a nice thin layer, and then just Okay, pick a couple up at a time. Picking the table wasn't the hardest job I've done, but there was a lot of stuff to go through, mostly shell, which has been buried in the sand for a really long time, which Chris explained was important to return to the water as it creates habitat for shellfish and other organisms. After four hours, I would say it was a bit of a grind. Post-pandemic inflation has driven all food costs much higher, and clams are fetching the boat almost 40 cents apiece. After five hours and 30 lifts of the dredge, we have about 20 bushels of clams, which need to be sorted, counted, and bagged. I can't imagine doing that by hand. The clam sorter uses three sets of rollers with differential spacing to separate the clams by size. An infrared eye counts each clam as it falls into the bag, making this process very efficient. We ended up with about 8,000 clams for the trip, which is what GNB needed for its orders. Since they own the ground, they can harvest only their market needs each day, ensuring only the freshest product makes it to market. Chris, thanks for taking me out today. That was really cool. I had no idea that this was such big, heavy equipment you needed to catch these little clams off the bottom. I guess the best part is you know they're there and you own the ground, so you don't really have to worry about them running away. Got that right. They're never gonna run away, but the, the problem's usually the catching them and having everything run in such a tight pattern where the smallest adjustments can make the biggest difference. 
Yeah, I saw on the tow rope you were adjusting it like just a couple of inches sometimes just to get it so that that dread was like as light as it could be on the bottom. I guess that's really important that you're not, that it's not sitting there with all its weight. Yeah, you, you really just want that the nose of that dredge just skimming off the top of the bottom. So you're, you're just getting those clamps to, to float up into the, the dredge. It was a nice day and we didn't have to go out in freezing cold weather, which I love because that's all I've been doing lately is really cold water, cold weather stuff. So that was really nice. I think I got a little color on my face and uh, it was great to go out with you. Yeah, definitely. We'll have you back whenever you want to, want to come out. Here. All right, thanks a lot. No problem. There are so many different ways we harvest our seafood. Hydraulic dredging isn't the only way to harvest clams, but has been embraced by the state of Connecticut, given the local ecology. I really love learning where all of our product comes from. I hope you enjoyed it too. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.